Remar family. How are you? Welcome to Winning Wednesday. We're going to talk about tardive dyskinesia, everyone. Are you ready for class? If it's your first time joining me here, my name is Regina Callion, and I am the leader of the Remar Nurses. We join together every Monday, every Wednesday, Wednesday at 9, Monday at 12. Everything that we do is to help you pass your NCLEX exam. So tonight is tardive dyskinesia. And hey, if you are testing soon, but you are tired of struggling with what should I be studying? How long should I be studying? It's time for you to become a Remar nurse. How many Remar nurses are in the house today? Yes, you can do this. If you're looking for that core content that you need to pass NCLEX in 30 days or less, jump onto this wave. We're riding it. Hey, it's the holiday season. So don't forget to mark your calendars for the seven days of NCLEX, the seven days of NCLEX Remar Nurses. I see you in the house. Seven days of NCLEX actually starts the day after Christmas. And there has already been 7,000 nursing students to sign up for this event. It will be every night from December 26th to January 1st. So we will be bringing in the New Year's together studying for NCLEX. And I think that's just so phenomenal when you have that um, desire, when you have that initiative to go into the new year studying. And listen, this is a time where if you're a nursing school, you're probably on Christmas or holiday break. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to learn what you need to do in order to get your nursing license. So seven days of NCLEX is happening. Sign up for it. RemarNurse.com forward slash seven days, the number seven days. Okay. That's how you get there. So again, I'm super excited for that holiday event. 7,000 of you have signed up. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. We're going over patient assignments. I'll be giving away cash money, baby. It's going to be good. Seven days of NCLEX is coming. Um, we are talking about this topic tonight, tardive dyskinesia, tardive dyskinesia, this, of course, comes from Quick Facts for NCLEX. Now, if you look, somebody give me the page. If you look at Quick Facts for NCLEX, you will see that this is in um, on page 82. Now, I have updated the Tardive Dyskinesia page. Yeah, I've updated the Tardive Dyskinesia page. So what I am doing tonight is I am giving everybody the updated page for tardive dyskinesia. All right. And let me tell you how you can get it. Let me tell you how you can get it. Go to, go to remarnurse.com. Yeah. If you have V2, it's in the file vault. Um, but if you go to remarnurse.com forward slash TD, so you put that in your website browser, remarnurse.com forward slash TD. That stands for tardive dyskinesia. You will come to my web page, and my web page um, looks like this. You'll come to my web page, right? And then when you click on download now, it will give you the new Word document for tardive dyskinesia, which is going to look like this. So if you have your book, you'll see that I have expanded the tardive dyskinesia quick facts section. And then also the clinical priorities there are for tardive dyskinesia. So that's available for everybody. I'll go back over to that page and we'll, we'll read it together at the end of this. But if you want to print it out and put it in your book or just have it with you, please go to remarnurse.com forward slash TD. This is the season of giving. So I am giving this page to everybody, okay? I'm giving this page to everybody. I have a lot more things that I'll be giving you guys. Seven days of NCLEX is coming up. And also, let me tell you this. If you don't have Quick Facts and you go to the page, you're able to get the Quick Facts for 10% off as well today too. So uh -huh, good things are happening right now, but we're gonna get into tardive dyskinesia. And I like this subject. I actually go over this in V2, but I wanted to review the things in V2 with you guys who are part of the study group, who are part of my um, my program, because I, I wonder if you've missed this. I wonder if you've missed this in the lecture about tardive dyskinesia, okay? Um, when I talk about tardive dyskinesia, I am talking about it during which lecture? 
This is a very important point before we move forward. When I'm going over our psychiatric conditions and our psychiatric medications, right? Typically, this is where you're going to see tardive dyskinesia, right? In psych. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to you guys about tardive dyskinesia in relationship to side effects of typical antipsychotic medications. You need to know that for your NCLEX exam, typical and atypical antipsychotic medications. Okay. Now, I wanted to ask you this. Do you know the difference between tardive dyskinesia and extrapyramidal symptoms? Did you pick up that little nuance? Because when we talk about tardive dyskinesia, we talk about akesthesia, we talk about Parkinsonism, right? Those are the things that you hear. And then you hear extrapyramidal symptoms. And then you hear tardive dyskinesia. But are they the same thing? Did you catch that? Did you catch it? What's the difference between tardive dyskinesia and extrapyramidal symptoms? Love it. This is why you come to class. This is why you're here. So extrapyramidal symptoms are, a, it's like a general term, okay? Yes, it's a general term. Extrapyramidal symptoms is a general term and it can be drug-induced or it can be not drug-induced, extrapyramidal symptoms. This is where you can have the, um, you know, you can have the dystonia, you can have the akesthesia, like I said, you can have rigidity. You could have tremors. Those are extrapyramidal symptoms. Tardive dyskinesia is a specific type of extrapyramidal symptoms. So um, you know how there is like diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is a general term. And then you have diabetes mellitus type 1, diabetes mellitus type 2, gestational diabetes. So it is a specific extrapyramidal symptom. OK, so we're going to look at tardive dyskinesia by itself because it is unique from other extrapyramidal symptoms. Are we on the same? Are we on the same page? All right. So what class does it fall under tardive dyskinesia? It falls out under extrapyramidal symptoms, but it's different. So let's be prepared to discuss how tardive dyskinesia is different. OK. All right. So let's go into it. Slide one is, I'm so glad you guys are tracking with me today. So tardive dyskinesia is a medication-induced hyperkinetic movement disorder, okay? Uh, I got to pause for the cause it is winning Wednesday today. I'm sorry, y'all. I got this testimonial and it's so good. I passed my NCLEX today and I am very grateful to Remar and Mark. May the good Lord continue to bless you after six years. I never gave up on your program, officially a Remar nurse. Wow. What does that mean? Have you been rocking with us for six years? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Okay. Um, but congratulations to you. It's the holiday season, the perfect time for you to give yourself the gift of a nursing license. Yes. Love that. Okay. So um, anyways, this, this tardive dyskinesia, medication-induced, hyperkinetic movement. So I see you guys comments. You're going to have the involuntary movements of the tongue, the arms, the rocking back and forth. It's iatrogenic, um, which means that it, it can stem from the treatment from medications that block dopamine receptors. Okay. So it can stem from dopamine receptor blocking agents. It is irreversible and can be lifelong. Now that is one of the main staples, that is one of the main things you must know and understand and take hold about tardive dyskinesia. Tardive dyskinesia is not something that will necessarily go away because you stop taking the medications. That's the distinction between tardive dyskinesia and, and maybe, you know, muscle rigidity uh, or when, when a patient becomes, um, they have trouble swallowing or things like that. Like it won't go away. Meaning a person could have not taken this medication for five years or 10 years and they still have the tardive dyskinesia. That's why it's so important for you to know this for the NCLEX exam, because you have to be able to recognize it 
early on. That's the best way of um, that's the best way of helping this patient. OK. All right. So we say all that and we say what medications are going to be most iatrogenic to this condition? Which medications are most likely going to cause this? So when it comes to antipsychotics, you guys understand the difference between first generation and second generation. If you have watched my lectures, if you have not watched my lectures, pick up a book and read this information so that you have it. OK, first generation is going to give us the highest risk of um, tardive dyskinesia. And then the second generation, not so much. There is a low risk for that. Now, let's look at this, this anti emetic medication. I am so surprised that metoclopramide, hey, guess what? Metoclopramide can be an offender that will cause tardive dyskinesia in a patient. Ah, right? Okay. So if a patient is on um, one or two of these medications, they are at risk for what? Tardive dyskinesia. Mm-hmm. Come on in. I have more people joining. If it's your first time, my name is Regina Callion. This is remarnurse.com, right? This is us right here. This is what we do. We help you get ready for NCLEX. So if you're like, hey, how do I log in? How do I join? Just go to the website, remarnurse.com. Get started. Every nursing student should have this book, okay? Quick facts for NCLEX. So if you don't at least have this book, tap in and get this one, all right? This is also on Amazon too, all right? So here we go. How can a person end up with tardive dyskinesia not knowing that they have it? Uh, well, they could be on a medication and prolonged use of this causative medication can cause this. Also, if a person has just a dopamine receptor hypersensitivity, okay, that's also going to be something that we will note. And what will we see the patho of this, the the, the irregularity of this is going to be involuntary movement of the tongue, the lips, the face, the trunk, and the extremities. I have so many, I, there's a lot of testimonials coming in. Hi, nurse judge, how are you? Says, I am, I'm officially a Remar nurse as well. I love that. I love when you guys say that. Um, I passed on the third time last week, Wednesday, I thank you, Regina and Pastor Mark. I praise God. Remar nurse right here. Know where to find us every Wednesday, nine o'clock. I'm going to read your testimonial. If you come here and take the time and let me know that you passed, I want to acknowledge um, your great effort. Nurse Munez says, hi, Regina. I passed the NCLEX. I am a Remar nurse. We got another one. Smiley faces all around. Thank you so much. You are the best. Congratulations. Huh? Yoli. Nice. Okay. All right. So we're talking about we're talking about winning Wednesday, y'all. This is what it feels like to be able to be in a in a seat of people who are winning tardive dyskinesia. What are the risk factors? Check this out. Being female puts you more at risk than being male. How many people know somebody with symptoms of tardive dyskinesia? Now that I've studied this, when you study something, you'll begin to see it. And there's so many people that I see um, that, you know, you wonder why they behave the way growing up, people in the church. Now I realize this was part of dyskinesia this whole time. You know, somebody with this condition over the age of 55, female, if you are smokers, you know, smoking just, it just is not the, 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 the cons outweigh the pros of smoking. This is another condition that puts you at risk if you're if you're a smoker. It's so crazy. Psychotic disorders, intellectual disabilities, dementia, of course. Um, if you've had extra pyramidal symptoms, other extra pyramidal symptoms that are not part of dyskinesia, alcohol and substance abuse also put you at risk. History of electroconvulsive therapy and comorbid diabetes. So if you are a diabetes patient, diabetes mellitus, that actually puts you at risk for tardive dyskinesia. Very interesting. When do the symptoms start? They start after a few weeks, like so one to six months after starting that medication. And again, we talked about uh, the 
a, uh, the typical antipsychotic or first generation being that major offender. Let's go through the tardive dyskinesia. Let's go through it. And we'll do it by sections of the body. So when we talk about the dyskinesia, we're talking about um, facial, okay? What do we see for facial movements? I loved how you put this in the comments before, but we do have protruding and twisting movements of the tongue. So you'll have that tongue just going in and out. Also the mouth moves. So pouting, puckering, smacking of the lips, bulging of the cheeks and chewing movements. Take note and check this out because I have some really tricky questions with tardive dyskinesia coming up. And I want to see if you guys are going to be safe nurses or if you guys are going to miss the very, very serious signs. OK. All right. Neck and trunk, what you can feel in the neck and trunk with tardive dyskinesia. And of course, these are movements that the patient can't control. So they, they know it's happening, but they don't have any force to say, I need to stop this. I know it looks strange. So you will see them shrugging their shoulders, turning their neck, right? They'd be thrusting their hips and they can't sit still. All right. And then that mouth is just moving. This is what tardive dyskinesia looks like in your patient. So imagine if this is your state constantly, how difficult it is for you to do what, right? If I'm turning, if I'm rocking back and forth and my neck is moving and my head is moving, how difficult is it going to be for me to what? Get dressed, right? Walk, eat, write, hold a job. It's going to be difficult for me to sit still. How about this? Get an EKG. How difficult is it going to be for you as the nurse to get an EKG of a patient with tardive dyskinesia? And this is a very real thing if you've ever worked in med surge. If you've ever worked in med surge, very difficult, very difficult, okay? All right, and so these are the things we're learning because we are going to be nurses. We are going to be taking care of patients out in the real world who will have these issues, all right? Um, Traveling long distance. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. OK, um, so these are the clinical manifestations of the shoulder limb. You will have twisting and spreading piano playing finger movement. Tapping the foot as well. How about respiratory wise? We're talking about tardive dyskinesia. We're getting into some psych here tonight. Love that topic. Respiratory wise, we are going to have tachypnea, tachypnea for our patient and also grunting noises. So what type of problem, if I asked you what body system does tardive dyskinesia affect, go back to anatomy, think of all the body systems, what type of issue is tardive dyskinesia? What body system, okay? If the person is having trouble with their movements, controlling their movements, what body system is this? Give it to me in the comments, nurses. This is our language. This is our stuff. Yes, I see it already. Good job. Good job. This is a neurological issue. Neurological issue. Absolutely. Great, great job. Neurological issue. So that is the profound effects of it. Now, let me read you this. Part of dyskinesia is a clinical diagnosis. What did I tell you on Monday? Clinical. What did I tell you? Oh, it was actually, it was Monday. And then it was last Wednesday when we talked about, um, we talked about Raynard's disease. What did I tell you when we see the word clinical, when we say that it is a clinical diagnosis, what are we talking about? Because there's no really confirmatory test here. When I say something is clinical, it means we are doing what? How many people were here for that class? It means it is observable. Good. It's, we're talking about observation. So tardive dyskinesia is a clinical, uh, it's a clinical diagnosis. Yes, I love it. I love it. You guys are taking notes. You're in this thing, seriously. So we're going to do a medication history because we're going to say, okay, has the patient had any psychotics, any emetics, any depressants, uh-huh. 
looking at the onsets, well, when did it start? Onset one to six months and doing a neural assessment, looking for the dyskinesia. Okay, looking for the dyskinesia there. Now, this is very important. Okay, um, and don't please don't get too much into the medications. I don't want you guys to feel like you have to memorize these ones. I just put it on here. If you're a nursing student, you're being introduced to this new onset. If the patient has a new onset, then we can discontinue or decrease the dose of the offending medication. All right. So that's what we would do. We try to make, you know, some sort of adjustment to the medication. If it is persistent, it is severe, we want to try to give a VMAT2 inhibitor, okay? And again, this is just the class of medications that is connected with the diagnosis, but I don't want you to memorize these medications. Just take this in because, again, how the doctor wants to treat this condition is going to be the doctor's discretion. We as nurses, we don't have to get into the depths of these psych medications, because they change very rapidly, okay? So, um, and we can see that this is essentially benzodiazepine types of medication. We know benzodiazepines are good for what they help with anxiety, they help as a depressant, so it makes sense, right? Um, other agents can be ginkgo biloba, amatidine. Now, if you have refractory dyskinesia, then some deep brain stimulation might be recommended. However, again, this is all the discretion of the doctor. Just saying that there are ways to try to treat the symptoms, but again, this condition is, is mostly irreversible once you have it, okay? So that's why it's very serious and I made it a totally different section in the quick facts. Mm -hmm. So what should the nurse know? Early detection is very important. Medication history, doing the AIMS assessment, and also clinical manifestations of this. Evaluation of therapy response. So we are going to be monitoring from withdrawal symptoms if we have to discontinue the causative agent. And then educating the patient on prevention. Of, of course, the best cure is prevention, not even letting this happen. So we do want to use a lot of caution in putting elderly patients on antipsychotic medications and then the co-concurrent uh, co use of metoclopramide. That's what you should know. Shout out to nurse Jasmine. She says, hello, Professor Regina. I am officially a Remar nurse. 2004 graduate. How long ago was that? Amazing. Right here. Past the NCLEX December the 8th at the minimum questions. Colleagues, get the V2 and quick facts. Attend the live classes. It really helps. I love this testimonial. Whatever, whatever excuses you have, whatever fears you have about NCLEX, this testimonial lets you know that you're still in a good place to pass it right now. That, it doesn't matter. Like, 2000. Oh my goodness. Look, she says it's been 19 years. Okay. 19 years. Phenomenal. Okay. That, that's a whole big teenager. All right. So you guys I must, you must give yourselves the opportunity to go and get your nursing license and don't let anything stop you. Cause nurse Jasmine just, she ended whatever excuses anybody could have tonight. Amazing. That's phenomenal. Woo, no excuses, just results. My goodness. Oh, we're ready for questions already? Is that it? That's it? Okay, so here's how this works. I'm going to put a question up. My, my goal for you, my goal for you is just to, number one, put a comment on the screen. Just do it. You're here, just do it. Give it a try. Also, try not to second guess yourself. I threw in some distractors here. Okay, I threw in some distractors here, so try not to second guess yourself. All right, don't forget seven days of NCLEX is coming up too. Okay, seven days of NCLEX is coming up too. And let me tell you this I like this. I'm halfway through V2 and I'm loving it. If you have V2, your, if you have my V2 program, your attendance at seven days of NCLEX is mandatory, it is required. It will help take your V2 
to the next level in terms of critical thinking. Okay, so just plan for it. This, I'll, I'll talk about it later. There's going to be two game nights, all this good stuff that I usually do. Here's the first question. Let go. Okay, number one, the nurse is giving oral medications. Which of the following clients has the highest risk of developing tardive dyskinesia? Okay, oral medication. Is it number one, a 10-year-old client taking risperidone? Two, 35-year-old client taking metoclopramide as needed for vomiting. Three, 60-year-old client taking haloperidol. Four, 55-year-old client taking clozapine. What do we say? What do we say? We are warming up here our minds. <laughs> We're warming up our minds. We're applying the content. This is the order. We did the content. Now we're doing questions. Always that way. Okay. Always that way. See some twos on the screen. See some threes on the screen. Twos and threes, twos and threes. We're not, I even see a four, okay? We are not all on one accord on this question. That's okay. Because we're here to learn. Correct answer. Did you get this one right? I'm looking for safe nurses. Four out of five tonight. Four out of five. First question, correct answer is number three. You have here, this person has the most risk factors, 60 year old plus taking haloperidol, which is a major offender, a first generation typical, okay? Mm, 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 mm. So tardive dyskinesia is more common in 55 year olds or older, client taking first generation antipsychotics such as haloperidol. Tardive dyskinesia is going to be less common in children and second generation antipsychotics such as risperidone and clozapine. So it takes more than six months of taking metoclopramide to put a patient at risk uh, for tardive dyskinesia. So I just want to go back really quickly and look at people who pick number two. Yes, metoclopramide was one of those medications that can cause this, but look at the age of the patient. This is a young patient. And then also... They're taking the medication as needed for vomiting, okay? So if you missed it, let's do another question and get you ready. Question number two says this. Hmm. A client who has beginnings of tardive dyskinesia asked the nurse on the appropriateness to start a treatment medication. Which of the following responses is most appropriate? So again, patient has the beginnings of tardive dyskinesia. They're asking about a treatment medication. Which of the following responses is most appropriate? Number one, start only if you can't tolerate the symptoms. Two, start only if you are not allowed to stop neuroleptics. Three, Start once you are unable to move your limb. Four, start once you are at risk for respiratory distress. Mm -hmm. Talking about interesting situation here. Correct answer is number two. Start only if you are not allowed to stop neuroleptics. Okay. The patient is asking, hey, when am I going to take some medication for this? Okay. So to manage tardive dyskinesia, it's important to stop the medication. That, that's going to be the best thing for us to do. All right. But if the patient can't stop the medication, then we're going to have to treat the symptoms. So it's best. All right. It's best for us to tell the patient, well, we got to see if we're only we're going to stop this medication. All right. Because if the client has severe mental illness, then it's not going to be recommended to stop the medication. They're going to have to learn to live with the tardive dyskinesia. Yeah. And this is why, you know, I say this in V2, this is why a lot of psych patients are not on their psych meds because psych meds 
in general have a lot of side effects. It is not fun to be on a psych medication because the side effects can be debilitating and horrific. So a lot of people will say, hey, I will have a delusion. I will have a hallucination every now and then. But for me to have extra pyramidal symptoms or tardive dyskinesia, I'll pass on that. Okay. And that is why a lot of people don't take their psych medication. The side effects are so bad. Next question. That one was kind of tricky. This one is even trickier. Here we go. A nurse is caring for a patient who has tardive dyskinesia. The doctor has been notified and is adjusting the patient's medication. The patient is upset because her tongue is moving in and out several times a minute. The patient wants to be alone. What is the nurse's priority action for this patient? Number one, nutritional assessment and ability to eat. Number two, assessing the skin around the mouth. Number three, assessing the client's risk for anxiety. Or four, assessing if the client wants her family involved. Okay, I'll read it again. Patient has tardive dyskinesia. Okay, patient has tardive dyskinesia. The doctor has been notified and is adjusting the patient's medication. The patient is upset because her tongue is moving in and out several times a minute. We know that's what happens with tardive dyskinesia. The patient wants to be alone, okay? What is the priority action for this patient? Number one, nutritional assessment and ability to eat. Two, assessing the skin around the mouth. Three, assessing the client's risk for anxiety. Or four, assessing if the client wants her family involved. What say you, Remar nurses? The safest thing, the priority nursing action. Oh, I hope you get this one right. It is number one. It's number one, the patient's nutritional assessment and their ability to eat. Because what problem is NCLEX putting in front of you? Priority problem. Look, she's upset because her tongue is moving in and out several times a minute. Well, the ability for your patient to be able to eat also translate <laughs> for your ability of your patient to be able to take their medication and also maintain hydration, maintain nutrition. That is the priority over a lot of you pick number. And I knew you would do it because I put it here as a distractor. You're worried about the anxiety of the patient, right? So you have to remember Maslow's. This is why you come to class. <laughs> because Maslow's hierarchy of need never fails you. It's, the, it's one of my favorite ways to do priority. So that anxiety, her wanting to be alone, yes, you can be alone, but first I got to make sure that you can eat or drink before I leave. Because at this point, you're a swallowing hazard. You're a choking hazard. I have to do my due diligence as a nurse, okay? Never forget that. Don't get caught up in the distractors, all right? And so when we work through these together, you'll get, you'll get better at them. We are moving on. Question number four. Are you guys with me? Yes, here we go. A nurse is advising a patient with tardive dyskinesia on selecting appropriate footwear. Okay. Given the patient's condition, which type of shoe would be most suitable? We're talking about tardive dyskinesia. What shoe is going to be better? Number one, slip on shoes with Velcro fasteners. Two, Slip on shoes that are loose with no laces. Three, high ankle shoes that buckle for closure. Or number four, sandals that buckle for support. What say if you? This is Winning Wednesday, class at nine, class at nine. Were you on time? Were you on class on time today? All right, correct answer. I think we're all on one accord about this one. I don't see anybody being fooled. Correct answer is number one. Number one, slip on shoes with Velcro fasteners. And this is going to be ideal for the patient uh, with tardive dyskinesia. And it's going to be easier for them to put on and take off the shoes. It don't require buttons or 
zippers or anything like that. And so this allows our patient to have their autonomy, even though they have physical limitations. Okay. All right. I am moving on to the next question. Stick with me here. Question number five. Here we go. For patients with tardive dyskinesia who may experience involuntary facial and tongue movements, which meal choice would be most appropriate? Okay. Number one, steak with soft mashed potatoes. Two, creamy soup and bread pudding. Three, raw vegetables and rice cake. Or four, soft yogurt and granola with fresh fruit. Ah, this is a tricky one too. It's good though. Patient has tardive dyskinesia, may experience involuntary facial and tongue movement. Which meal choice? All right. Steak and soft mashed potatoes, two creamy soup and bread pudding, three raw vegetables and rice cake, four soft yogurt and granola. Correct answer is, uh-huh. That's not right. I'm sorry, guys. Let me see if I have it here. You guys were right, though, with the answer. It was, let me go back to it and just tell you, I don't know what happened, where it went to. I'm going to go back to it. It should be two. It should be two. Creamy soup and bread pudding. Creamy soup and bread pudding was the correct answer here because as well, um, the other ones, hold on, let me go back to it. Number five. Steak and soft mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes are fine, but the steak doesn't work. Raw vegetables and rice cakes. Rice cakes are pretty hard when they're broken up, so they're difficult to swallow. Raw vegetables can also be hard to swallow. And then four, even though I put soft yogurt here, I was hoping I could trick somebody with the granola and fresh fruit, but I didn't. I didn't trick anybody with that. Most of you guys did pick number two for the creamy soup and the bread pudding. Creamy soup and bread pudding. Bread pudding is really good too, guys. So I, um, sounds like a good meal. Were you safe nurses tonight? How many did you do? Four out of five, three out of five? Part of this kinesia. Hey, don't forget that I did put this page. I know somebody came on late and said, how do I get the, um, how do I get the quick facts page for the updated part of dyskinesia, please go to remarnurse.com forward slash TD and you will be able to get this page. Now, let me um, let me read to you guys what's on the page for those of you who don't have it. So this is the updated part of dyskinesia. This is a side effect of which medication? Well, that is going to be antipsychotics. OK, we know it is the typical antipsychotics. Um, what are the clinical signs of TD? A chewing motion with the mouth, tongue sticking in and out, and involuntary movements of the arms and legs. Will the patient have a stiff neck? Yes. Which class of medications can be given to decrease the effects? Anti-Parkinson's. What is the assessment used to detect part of dyskinesia? It's called the AIMS exam. Which class of antipsychotic medications have a less incidence of tardive dyskinesia? That is going to be the second generation, okay? Our priority, our clinical priorities for tardive dyskinesia, let me read these to you. Number one, the first line of management of tardive dyskinesia is to take the patient off of the antipsychotic medication. That's the primary, that we had a question on this. All right. It may not be possible in all cases, though. Two, haloperidol is a medication associated with tardive dyskinesia. Three, tardive dyskinesia is often confused with Parkinsonism or neuroleptic malignant syndrome or akathisia. Four, the involuntary movement of tardive dyskinesia. This is a major point can become permanent even after the patient stops taking the medication. So again, these are very important points for you to know. 
and I wanted to share them with you so everybody can get those. Everybody can get those notes for tardive dyskinesia. Just go to remarnurse.com forward slash TD. Now, I do want to, I wanted to look into the V2 workbook because I said that the tardive dyskinesia can sometimes be confused with neuroleptic malignant syndrome. And I wanted to just point you guys to where I talked about neuroleptic malignant syndrome. And I think it's on page 91, okay? So if you have V2 on page 91, where we go over psych medications, it is right under the typical anti-psych, all right? So also, 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 if you don't have V2, please take the trial of V2, the free trial of V2 to see if the presentation fits your learning style. Your learning style is very important when you are trying to get through so much information, so much information. So you have quick facts that you need to be memorizing, okay? And then you have your lectures in the V2 that you need to be watching. So both of those things are very important. If you're in the free trial, you will be able to do, if you're in the free trial, let me get out of the, here's the file vault here. Somebody was saying you didn't see it in file vault. If you go to your file vault, the tardive dyskinesia is um, the first the first file here. It's under quick facts. Let me show you. It's under the quick facts next gen tab. So quick facts has a next gen tab. Now, if you have V2, then you guys know your lectures are down here. If you are in the trial version of V2, you will be able to see all of the maternity and child health section. So get in there, click on pregnancy, get the workbook out and start taking notes. There's even a there's even a free trial workbook, okay? So make sure you print that out. And let me just say something to you guys who have the V2 and you're not and you have not printed out the workbook and you don't have this. Okay? You don't have this. If you're just watching these V2 videos and you are not taking notes during these videos, shame on you because the workbook is going to help you. The workbook is going to help you memorize these videos. And I know they're easy to watch and they're all that stuff. But if you're not taking the lecture notes, then that means you could possibly be missing out on a lot of medication because when you have the workbook, whether you download it or not, some of the information is filled in for you that you need to read. And so if you're not reading and seeing this information, then you're not doing the program correctly. Okay. You're not doing the program. So, and I'm only saying this because you guys message me and say, Hey, I did the program. I don't feel ready. Hey, should I be doing something more? And then when I asked you, did you take the CAT exam where I asked you, did you fill out the workbook? You say, well, no, I didn't print out the workbook. I just listened to the videos. Guys, I want you to do the program the way it is intended to be done. So that's watch the lectures, take notes, okay? And then study quick facts. At the end, do the question bank. That's how the program is to be done. So don't skip out on anything. I don't mind you listening to the videos once you've taken the notes, if you want to go back and do that. But you need to do this right because this is very important for you to be ready for this exam. The way you pass an 85, the way you pass an 110 and all those things is because you're very comfortable with the information. So do it right and just have to, and then you just get it done. Okay, do it right and get it done. If anybody has any, um, anybody has any other questions, please let me know. Don't forget to sign up for NCLEX. Seven days of NCLEX is coming. All right, seven days of NCLEX. I wanted to put this. Uh, hey, it says I passed the exam on December second. Thank you, Regina, for your help and prayer. Our God is Almighty and El Shaddai. Amen. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Is the V two? These are good. Great questions. If you have questions, let me know, please. Is the V2 the same as VT? Please let me know. V2 is not the same as VT. V, VT, absolutely not. Um, V2 was for the previous NCLEX. V2 is for next generation NCLEX. So even if you look at the structure of V2, it's much different.
from the VT. Okay, V2 also has the question bank attached to it with the next gen questions, which you guys know VT did not have. So it's very important if you're taking the next gen NCLEX that you would um, come into the V2, okay? Because this is how you're going to get prepared, okay? This is how you're going to get prepared. Great question. Any other questions for me really quick while I'm on here? Where do I find TD information in the file vault? Hey, Angela, it's good to see you. It's really easy. Let me close this out here. If you go to your file vault section, it's right under the question bank. If you go to file vault and you click on course resources like I'm doing, click on RN or PN. And then if you go to quick facts right here, click on that and it will take you right here, Tardive Dyskinesia. You will see the document and you will be able to print it out. Okay. <laughs> All right, good job. The workbook for seven days of NCLEX um, is not out yet, but it is coming out. Mark and I was just looking at it. I threw a game night. I threw two game nights in seven day NCLEX, which I haven't done before. So the first day we'll get a patient. Then second night will be game night. I'm going to have probably multiple winners for that game night. So it'll be like that. Um, let me see. Is there any difference between the R and P and Q banks? Yes, very different. Okay. Uh, uh, order if you have anything like specific about your orders or your specific like v2 please email support at remarreview.com because i want you to get what you have whatever you order whatever you're waiting for i want you to have it okay absolutely the more you write the more you remember <laughs> absolutely how do i join the seven days thing great question it's really easy actually if you just go to my website let me show you guys. If you just go to my website, remarnurse.com, I won't show you. I'll just tell you. Go to remarnurse.com forward slash seven days. Can somebody put that up there so our friend can see how to join? Okay, perfect. My account, um, your account is going to turn to trial mode in a few hours. Um, if you don't do anything, it will automatically renew itself. Okay, because it's a subscription. It's a subscription. Where can I find this book in Clex Review Trainer? Which book are you talking? You're talking about this one right here. You can find this book if you want. If you do you have V2, let me know. If you already have V2, that book is in your file vault. You don't have to, you don't have to buy it. There are people who want me to print this out for them. So they go to remarnurse.com and they buy the physical book. But if you already have V2, then it's in your file vault. And remember, you're, you're printing it out and you're filling it out. So a lot of it is going to be blank. And the idea is that you watch the videos and you fill out the blanks. Okay. So if you have V2, it's in your file vault. But don't just purchase this book without V2 because it's going to be blank. Okay. So it's not like Quick Facts. It's, it's the lecture book. Makes sense? Okay, let me talk. Okay, so you're not talking about people who just joined. I'm confused about everything. Okay, all right. So when I say V2, I'm talking about my NCLEX platform. It's the virtual trainer too, but we just shortened it to V2. This is a comprehensive NCLEX review and it includes my lecture videos. So like today we did a class and you heard me teach, but this is not my NCLEX review. This is just me reviewing things from the V2. But when you purchase the V2, let me go back here. When you purchase the V2, you're going to get my actual NCLEX review. And I'm going to take you from pregnancy, okay, to your physiological integrity. These are all the lectures that are in my platform, medication, Pharmacological therapies, I have some clinical math in here, EKG, psych, all the way to prioritization, okay? There are lectures. I'm talking about quick facts too, okay? So you'll watch the lectures, you'll study from quick facts. And let me tell you, you don't have to guess because there is a daily study calendar that you can follow. 
That's one thing I love about the program is that in your file vault, there is a, there's a study calendar for you. And there's 20 study sessions that you will go through. You'll watch something, you'll read something, your answers, you'll answer something, okay? You'll watch it, you'll read it, you'll answer it. And that's study session one, two, three. It's really simple, it's really fast. So many people go through it. You can be ready for your NCLEX in 30 days or less, okay? Because there's just 20 study sessions. V2 also comes with a question bank. So everything is in one. You don't have to go and get your questions from somewhere else. V2 itself also has a question bank where you're able, after you watch the videos, you can go and create your own exams. Just like, you know, in, just like you're taking your actual NCLEX. There's even computer adaptive exams. So if you want to go and practice questions, you can populate it. It'll look just like your NCLEX. Students really love this as well. My questions are pretty challenging, but I think that they're the best for the content, okay? When you do the combination of lectures plus the questions, okay, in my material, it will prepare you for NCLEX. And I don't care if you failed in the past. I don't care if you, you know, English is your third or fourth language. I can help you pass this test. I've seen it. It doesn't matter if you've been out of school for several years. You can pass this test. You have to do the work. It's not easy, but it can be done. It can be done. So as a beginner, can I use two months to prepare for the exam adequately? As a beginner, yes. If you have finished nursing school, if you have finished nursing school, you can pass this test, okay? Now, two months is subjective. You're going to have to work very hard. You're going to have to work hard, but you can do it, okay? All right. Um, what else do you have? Any other questions? Yes, the new, the new tardive dyskinesia document is free for everybody to download. You can go to remarnurse.com, okay? You can go to remarnurse.com forward slash TD. And I'll put it up on the screen just for you to see it too as well, all right? So if you've been struggling with this exam, you don't kind of know what should you be studying, how long you should be studying, the virtual trainer is gonna solve that for you. I, I think if you're trying to get your nursing license, in the next two months, three months, this is the program for you to be in. And you can also join me always Mondays at noon, Wednesdays at nine. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the same things that we, um, that, that you're learning in the V2, just to make sure you understand it. Because like I said, I discussed heart of dyskinesia in V2. It's also in quick facts, but at the same time, these classes help you to apply what you're learning. Yeah, apply what you're learning. Everything we're doing here is help you pass NCLEX. Absolutely. Okay. All right. This exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if you have more questions for me about how to join my V2 program, want to know how you can pass your NCLEX, get it done in 30 days, go to remarnurse.com. Uh, no, email me, support at remarreview.com. Yes, there's a V2 for R and MPN. Both exams, both NCLEX exams, I can help you pass. If I'm an international nurse and I'm taking NCLEX for the first time, is three months a better time frame to study? I would say yes, because as international nurses, I do feel like you need more time to digest some of this information. I do think you guys pick up on certain subjects a lot faster than others. But when I'm working with international nurses for a company or a, a, what, a, like, you know, a system of some sort, medical system, we do give them a little bit more time. So I would go with the three months. Okay. My email is support at remarreview.com. Yeah. But international nurses do very well. When you have the information that you know you need to study, I find that international nurses do extremely well extremely well. So get into it. Okay. Get into it. Support at remarreview.com if you have any questions. Um, and we'll answer them in the order that you, that you put them in. Thank you so much, Professor Regina and the whole Remar team and community. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Yes. <laughs>
Nurse Messiah says, oh, in Jesus, yes, in Jesus name, I will be successful in passing my NCLEX RN with prayers, having faith, working hard in support of my family and Remar team. Yes, absolutely. And thank you for coming to class. You're a regular now. I'm entering my last semester of my RN program. Congratulations. So did you finish critical care yet? And that's like so hard. What program do you advise I joined? Do you have any live lectures? I just ordered the book. So when you're finished, um, you're going to get into the V2. You're going to get into the V2 for RN. You'll already have quick facts. So you just need to do the lectures and do the practice questions. This is going to help you. You'll probably be able to pass in 85 questions if you do that work. Okay, so you'll end up ultimately getting the V2. When you purchase the V2, make sure you get it without quick facts, though, because you'll already have that book. So do me a favor and sign up for the seven days of NCLEX because you'll probably be on break during this time because it's right after Christmas. So if you sign up for seven days of NCLEX, you will see you will see the need <laughs> for the content that I'll be going over with you in V2. OK, Um Hi, Regina from the Philippines. Hey, I am so excited. I will actually be coming to the Philippines. So I hope that I can see you guys there. I'll be in the Philippines in March. Will you be there? I'm coming to Manila. Um, Tara says, I am graduating Saturday and have already started using your platform to study for the NCLEX. Amazing, amazing. That's what I expect. You, um, your, your final year, Honestly, if you do your final year and you get into the V2, you'll you'll be ready, ready for your exit exams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do I get into V2? It's super simple. Go to remarnurse.com. I was trying to do it, but I'm, I always am nervous to do that. If you go to remarnurse.com, you'll be able to choose whether you want your RN or PN, that's going to be the main thing. Make sure that you are going to your correct one, okay? <laughs> yes, I'm coming to Asia. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Please help with case studies. Case studies, please come to seven days of NCLEX because we literally will be doing case studies. The in, I'm literally, you'll be taking report. You will be looking at Mars, all those things, okay? What else? Reactivating your account. You have to reactivate your account from your um, your profile. If you go, if you log into your V2 and it's in trial mode, then click on my profile and it will ask you if you want to activate, restart your account, okay? All right. Yes, yes, yes. I'm coming to Manila. I'm going to do an NCLEX review there for you guys. Nerves. Um, if you're nervous, how have you been studying? You're taking NCLEX in a week. How have you been studying? How do I register for Manila? Um, I don't know if we have the we I don't know if we have the website up just yet for registration. It'll be coming. Let me know, Team Remar, if we already have that website up. But I think I'm still working on it. Actually, I am still working on it. They're waiting on me. Do you have to work in VT and V2 at the same time? No. No. Everybody should be in V2. Move over to V2. If you have VT, VT is great for the lectures, but move to V2. V2 is going to help you prepare. Okay? V2 is going to help you prepare. If you need the calendar, you can get it in your file vault. If you um, if you email me, support at remarreview.com, I'll, I'll make sure you get it too. Okay. All right. Is Florida on the schedule for a review? What part of Florida are you in? Let me know. Okay. Regina, do you visit my school when you visit Manila, St. Jude College, Manila? Um, I don't, but if you want to give me contact information of your school, email it to me. Okay. Email it to me. Is it possible you do get a, um, 
you do get a certificate. Once you're finished with V2, you do get a certificate. What about Jersey? Oh my goodness, you guys. See, I knew that was going to happen. You want me all over. Okay. Um, let me let me process it. Let me process it. Because when I come to a city, there is usually a large crowd of people that will come. All right. So we do want to have live reviews. Manila right now is the only live review that I have coming up. It's only live, but you never know. But I'm doing seven days of NCLEX. Will you come to that? Will you come to that? Cool. See, there's a Peter. Um, I'm at, I'm nervous. I'm an LPN and I'm starting school, RN school, May 2024. Don't be nervous. This is what you want. You signed up for this school. It's not a surprise that it's not a surprise that you are um, that you're going. Don't be nervous. Be excited about it. And actually, if you're already LPN, then you you've done the the harder NCLEX. The PN NCLEX is is hard. So you can do this. Our in school, it's going to be a lot of writing. It's going to be a lot of paper writing for you. It's but you, you can do it. Okay. Um, uh, watching from Philippines. Also, don't forget when you sign up for seven days of NCLEX, we will be giving out cash app prizes. Okay. Cash app every day. And then we'll have game night as well. I passed my NCLEX RN with Quick Facts, November 10th, 2023. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus and Regina. Okay. All right. Um, I'm trying to answer everybody's questions. So do me a favor. Do me a favor. Please send me an email. Please send me an email, support at remarreview.com. If you have something specific that you want me to check into for you, Definitely Team Remar is on it. I'm on it. I'm trying to answer everybody's email. The don't forget to print out the Tardive Dyskinesia page for yourself. Don't forget to print out the Tardive Dyskinesia page for yourself. Remarnurse.com forward slash T D. I'm excited for seven days of NCLEX. It's coming faster than we know it. And I will have the workbook out to you soon. I mean, I'm, I'm going to try to have it out by Friday so you can print it out and see what we're doing. Taking your exam in March, you should definitely be at seven days of NCLEX. I don't know how you've been studying, but you should you can you can complete V2 in four weeks. If you do five study sessions a week in V2, you can have it done in a month. I've had people do V2 in two weeks, okay? Make sure you're emailing the right email, support at remarreview.com. Support at remarreview.com because we literally have people emailing and checking those emails all the time. You can also DM us on Facebook, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you guys are all here too. All right, so that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to go so that I can prepare the next things for you. This is just a preview of what we do. Like I said, I'm constantly referring you guys to the V2 because that is where you get A to Z topics. That is where you get all of the information that actually comes together, okay? Because when we come here, I'm literally just picking and choosing topics, but the way you learn the, the information in V2 is for a purpose and it helps to stick with you, helps to stick with you. So I'll be back next week to talk about the stuff that I talk about when I talk about it in V2. <laughs> uh, but just to make sure that everybody who has the program is staying on track. I do this for accountability. Sometimes that's all you need. You just need somebody checking in on you. Hey, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Well, guess what? Today, you did what you were supposed to do, which was come here. You're not here by accident. You're here because you pressed your way to be to class. Some of you guys, it's very early in the morning. Some of you, I saw somebody just say, it's 6 a.m. where I am. But I'm here because I need to hear this before I go to class. Or no, before I go to work. And the reason why is because you don't want to be working at that job forever. You're trying to get to a new job. And I love that. And you know what? I know we're friends. You know how I know we're friends? Because even after you pass NCLEX, you still come back here and you check on me. And you encourage me and you encourage other people. And I see you recommending Remar. And I see you telling people about Remar.
So even though you will grow, you, you, you'll grow separately. You, you will pass NCLEX. You're coming here now, you'll pass NCLEX. But just when you do that, just make sure we don't grow apart. <laughs> so you can grow separately, but let's not grow apart because I like what we have here, guys. All right, and I want to keep it going. So every time you show up to class reinforces the friendship. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.